Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzle loading. Today we're going to do a little muzzle loader bullet testing here at the range. As supplies have kind of come back into stock here for the hunting seasons across the U.S., I've gone into several sporting goods retailers over the past few weeks and picked up a variety of modern muzzleloader bullets for our CVA Acura LRV2. I thought it would be neat to see what these bullets can do here at 100 yards, but we're not going to be shooting a paper target today. Today we're going to be shooting this line of 15 one-gallon plastic water-filled jugs. Now, I recognize this isn't super scientific. There's a little bit of science here. Maybe some like redneck muzzleloader science. But I wanted to see if we could see any difference in penetration at 100 yards with each of these four bullets. Now we're going to be shooting them all with the same powder charge, 80 grains of Blackhorn 209, same distance, same jugs, everything the same but these bullets to see if we can see any difference in performance here. I recognize that this is not a substitute for a deer or a hog or an elk or anything, but I'm just kind of curious to see if we can get any difference out of these bullets shooting this kind of target. Over to the side of the milk jugs, you can kind of see there I have a high-speed camera set up it should be filming at 120 frames per second so after each shot with each bullet we're going to be able to break down and kind of follow that bullet hopefully through each of the milk jugs to see what it does and any changes that might happen as it travels through each gallon of water first thing we want to do when we get to the range with a muzzleloader like this one is we want to pop a primer just to clear our bore get any extra oil or cleaning residue left over from the last time this also checks to make sure that we don't have a loaded bore left over from the last time we were out at the range, the last time we went out hunting. So I've placed a federal primer there, snap that. I'm gonna put on my hearing protection here. We're just gonna pop this cap, pointing the rifle in a safe direction, and, uh, and then we'll get started. We know the bore's clear, so we can start loading. You can see our bullet there. I had a few comments last time about tamping the bullet down. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of an easier, just press seat here to make sure we're down. I don't claim to be a professional here when it comes to muzzle loading. So if you ever see something that you do differently than I'm, than I'm doing, please let me know. I'm always happy to try out something different the next time I'm out at the range. Okay, let's go see what that did. So coming off of it, I noticed that we lost a few off the front. Wow. Okay, so it looks like we totally shredded two of the jugs. And we can see there a little bit of copper off of that jacket. Absolutely shredded. I think this was the first jug. And then this would be our second. And just really opened it up. Wow. So here's where they were. You can see that first jug just launched that way. And we have penetration into the third jug, but not the fourth here. Oh, we've got the bullet in here. Into our third jug, this is our power belt arrow tip. This flattened right out like that. This looks like a big lead slug in there. So this one cut into and split the front of this third jug and that's where it stopped. It did not get into any of the other jugs there. And I'm really happy we were able to rec recover this or retrieve it. It's really neat to see that laid out flat there. You can see a little bit of that jacket there like we saw in the first jug. Um, the second jug there is a little too broken up to tell. But that's pretty sweet. You can see it burst a little bit there on the bottom from that force but we don't have any exit there. To give you a better idea of that penetration, this is our first jug, our second jug, and our third jug. So the first one, pretty much destroyed. The second one, we have about a half of it trying to retain shape. And the third one here, we have a nice split. And you can see those kind of next to each other. 
starting to sleet or snow so we're going to try to book it here and get this done before the weather deteriorates but i've set up the rest of the jugs now so we have 15 back up there for the sake of consistency i've put another clear jug at the front um, and then the rest going back are the same as the previous test just to make sure that we're getting the same kind of entrance penetration or giving them a fair chance across the board here next we're going to do the power belt elr 330 grain so these are 35 grains heavier than our arrow tips that we just shot to give you a frame of reference boy these are chunky so there's our elr that we're going to be shooting get a lot of questions about black horn about cleaning but really in, in my reading they show that you shouldn't or you don't need to necessarily clean your bore between shots and actually a lot of times it likes to shoot a little dirty so that's what we're going to try here today Okay, so here we are, our first jug, and then uh, second and third, it looks like. There's number four, and we have penetration here into number five. It looks like we have an exit, but uh, nothing into, into the next one. Looks like we had it, uh, looks like it bounced out in there and dropped into the backstop. We have, I think just a little bit, you can see there, Maybe just a little bit of distortion there where it bounced out, but didn't have enough to cut into. So it looks like that extra 35 grains of weight helped us get into two more jugs uh, with the ELR over that arrow tip. There's our little jacket piece there. But it doesn't look like we have any recovered slug there, which I'm kind of disappointed about, but we know it went through five. Here are our containers for the Powerbelt ELR 330 grain bullets in order so you can kind of see the damage done to them. Like I said on this one, I'm going to count this as five because we do have full penetration on this guy. Did not go into number six though. So we hit here and kind of bounced out to the side. Had this been, uh, you know, come through straight, you know, I think we could have seen penetration in to jug six, but this is what we have here for confirmed hits. Next up, 270 grain Federal Premium Bore Lock. So these kind of all snap in there. That's slick. That's nice to see. There you can see that's our bore lock. Pretty long bullet as the sleet continues. I thought, you know, there's got to be plenty of time for four shots. He said, foolishly, that one's much tighter. Get it in there. And as I come here to the range, you can see over there that our first clear plastic jug that we had set up here has just been eviscerated. The other half of it is over here beyond our camera station. There's that piece. I've got the cap for it. <laughs> our second jug has just been split stem to stern here. Cap is still on that one. Um, it's kind of funny the cap is still on that one, really. I think just a center shot you can see on this second jug at the very least, right through the center of mass. This is our third jug of penetration here. Oh, and there's our bullet in there, okay. And you can see our fourth jug is clean. Our little nick here from the ELR. Wow. 
I didn't expect that. So that bore lock just opened up like an octopus. And we're still keeping that little sabot plastic uh, thing there. I figured that would eject at some point. But really nice mushrooming there. Wow. Here are federal bore lock jugs in order. One, two, three of penetration. Here you can see the arrow tip, the power belt arrow tip. Very similar jug destruction, I would call it here, across these two bullets. But there's our first laid out, our second comically holding onto the cap, and our third just split in the front where we've recovered the bullet. Conditions continue to deteriorate here. I'm trying to keep my <laughs> equipment fairly dry. You can see this is our Thor bullet. This is our 247 grain, 50 caliber bullet here. Send this down range. You'll notice this is the only bullet I think we're shooting with no plastic, which I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more of in the muzzleloading world. Okay, so here's our scene at the 100 yard mark. We have our first jug over here, the clear plastic jug, just pretty much gutted. And this is, I think, par for the course on all the bullets we've tested today here. I think this clear plastic might be a little bit thinner. And our second jug here is just totally flattened out, which is nice to see. So that's into two. And then number three is right here. We have just a nice, clean center split there, right down the middle. We don't have penetration. We have a, I would, I would call this a, uh, probably just from the force, from the kinetic energy of that bullet coming down range, splitting jug four. But here, jug three, we have our bullet down in here in the bottom. So while we didn't go through jug three, we did have nice, spread here on that bullet really opening up much like we saw with the bore lock here you can see the primary order for our thor bullet our first second and our third and i'm putting the fourth one over here off to the side we did not penetrate into the fourth one but the force did split it open there that's something we didn't see on any of the other projectiles that we've tested here today and i want to note that but the penetration was only into these first three that fourth one is just a an energy split i guess is what i'm going to start calling it but you can see punched right through and you can actually see that kind of circle there where that bullet went through that's kind of neat or at least a part there where it uh, came in and then it just shattered almost like a lightning bolt kind of like the uh i <laughs> you're not going to believe me but i I know they have a bullet called the lightning bullet, but um, that's not what I was thinking about when I when I said that. We have that just kind of going right through there, splitting that first one. And the same deal on our second one, just kind of cut it right open and split our third one. I'm really pleased with the center hits all the way through all of our jugs. Um, really the only one that started to veer off was our EOR after it went through five complete jugs. Um, so all of them went through three jugs at the bare minimum right through the center all the way through um, the jugs that they penetrated which i think is is something to note let's take a look here at our bullets in order we do not have the power belt elr i'm a little tempted to try another shot with those just to see if we can recover one because it's neat to see how these bullets look after they come out so that arrow tip just flattened right out into a nice slug almost like a lead round ball that you see recovered. This is our federal bore lock. That nice mushroom out of that stem there. Really weird, interesting stem. And that plastic has gone hard after going through that. And our Thor bullet, very similar to that federal bore lock where we opened up quite a bit. 
it's neat we can see how that force distorts the base of that bullet as it's going through that muzzle i mean that's that gas seal that they talk about it's neat to see that see uh physics in action so there you go there's a little science for us i have the ammo i have the milk jugs i'm going to see if we can capture one of the power belt elr bullets in one of these jugs i think it would be nice to be able to see all four here at once you're not going to believe me, but uh, as I was cleaning up the slow motion camera, I actually found the ELR slug or a remnant of it on the ground uh, just in the same trajectory as we saw the exit wound or wound and air quotes there out of its last jug that it penetrated. So I've got it here. We're going to put it on the bench. Here is all four now. All four bullets next to each other. So you can see what we are able to recover now. It looks like to me, uh, again, I'm not like a, I'm a professional muzzleloader hunter or anything, but it looks to me like we lost a lot out of the ELR bullet here, fragmented out somewhere. Um, it's neat though, you can see the rifling grooves in that slug where it's engaged our rifling, which is neat. It's neat to see that in that base. First is our power belt arrow tip. This is what we were able to find of our power belt ELR. This is our federal bore lock. Flip it up, you can see the top of it there. And this was our Thor 247 grain bullet there. Get you a top view of everybody here. If things went by a little too quickly in the video, you can check out the first link in the description down below. This will link to the blog post at ilovemuzzleloading.com where I'll have stills of the slugs, of the penetration, and uh, some stills out of the video, especially the slow-mo shots, so we can see how these bullets were performing in real time. So be sure to check those out. I'll have all of that annotated with the data as much as I can uh, so that you can learn and we can all learn uh, from this. So what does all this mean? Um, to be quite frank with you, I don't really know. <laughs> um, this is the first time I've really done something like this. Um, a lot of folks have been asking for some more testing. I mean, my interest in this just comes from the muzzleloading aspect of it. This is really getting into some more of the science and the engineering of muzzleloading that I, I'm really intrigued by, but I don't have a lot of experience in. So, you know, Take a look at these, let me know what you think. Um, is there something that we could have done better on this test to make it you know, more consistent, more accurate? Um, is there another test that you want us to do? I know several folks have reached out asking about a chronograph for uh, both the traditional muzzleloaders and the modern muzzleloaders. So I'm looking at getting that out if the weather holds up here for us to, uh, to see kind of what these muzzleloaders are doing speed-wise now that we kind of have an idea of penetration and then what the recovered slugs are looking like. Overall, I'm pleased with the results that we we're able to get out of this test. Like I said, it was kind of a redneck engineering test. I wasn't really sure how it was gonna go or if we'd really even get any different results across these bullets. Um, but I'm really pleased actually that the rifle is I think shooting dead on at that hundred yards and it's able to cut through these jugs. Uh, I'm not sure what that would do on a deer or an elk or a hog or something, but um, seeing that <clears throat> be able to be that dead on accurate at 100 yards and that accuracy travels through those jugs I think was pretty neat um, that's really what I was out here interested in uh, whether or not you know I'm not really trying to make a comment about the bullets I'm impressed with their performance as far as accuracy goes and I think it's neat to see how the different bullets spread out I think there are a lot of different designs that these engineers and manufacturers are using you know for their specific bullets um, but if that's something you want us to dive into a little bit more let me know and we'll try to talk to some of these manufacturers and try to compare the redneck engineering tests that we're getting out here in the woods with what they're seeing and what they're doing in the lab and try to explain a little bit more of the science behind these muzzleloaders like i said i can't uh, i'm not going to claim to be able to i'm just out here having fun with a muzzleloader again like i said at the beginning of the video if i was doing something in the video that you think i can improve on or do differently to get better results out of a muzzleloader like this one or any muzzleloader that we're using on the channel please let me know i'm more than willing to learn from anybody out there that knows more than i do on this and uh, that's going to be 99, 100% of you really.
Uh, I'm just out here trying to spread my love of muzzleloading so we can keep all of this going for a few more generations. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you again so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.